introducing your strategic web solution, Open T-Shirts. Open T-Shirts is an easy to use website, professional design studio, and a shopping cart. It's easy and professional. With Open T-Shirts, anyone can have a professional custom design website, including your competition. OpenT-Shirts.com, changing the way print does digital. Welcome to Open T-Shirts Tutorials and Training. In this session, we're going to get into how to design a header or slider graphic for our Open T-Shirts website. Before we get into the actual graphic design tutorial, I'd like to take a look at some of the marketing aspects that really should be the purpose or objective behind the designing of a header or slider graphic for a website. You know, before I was a graphic artist, I was a commercial artist, and I very often say that I started at the age of 16 working in a vocational program at my local high school in an actual print shop doing live work. And I had a very good teacher there by the name of Charles Dino. And he was very meticulous about teaching us that, yes, we're artists, but yet we're artists for commercial purposes or for marketing and sales and conveying business messages. Here we are some 30 years later in the age of the Internet. And we understand things about the Internet and marketing. And one of the most important things we have to understand relating to our website and the Internet is that we're dealing with time frames and we're dealing with how people interact with our web page. Internet research has shown that when a prospect or a new potential customer hits our website, we have eight to 10 seconds to get their attention or else they're gonna bounce off of our website and go someplace else and that's not what we want happening. We need to understand that when a prospect or a client hits our website, they're looking at our business and saying what value is here? What's available for me here? With open t-shirts we have the ability to convey quite a bit of value within that time frame through our header or slider graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look at some more things here relating to marketing. When working on a website design or image we are designing with a purpose. That purpose is marketing or sales. Now of course that's in my opinion. We want to convey a message about our products and services and everything we do relating to design for our websites. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be aware of what value do we have in our business and our website that we can make available to our visitors or our clients or prospects that are on our website. And I believe with open t-shirts we're dealing with a very unique situation here because of the value that we have to offer. And I think with open t-shirts, our main objective in the design process is marketing. Marketing by definition is an activity. Marketing activities and strategies result in making products available that satisfy customers while making profits for the companies that sell those products. Nowadays, in the digital age, we're also selling our websites. We're not just selling products. We're kind of stepping beyond that and we're entering into the area of working in the internet with our websites. I've worked on websites, I know how much money websites can make. I've worked with screen printing apparel companies and developed websites that make tens of thousands of dollars a month. And looking back at that and always continuing to learn and ponder things, and I'm starting to realize more and more that we are selling our websites as much as we're selling our companies and our products when we're dealing with the internet. And with open t-shirts, we have the ability to make value propositions that you won't find with the typical websites. And I think we want to be able to present that value to our clients and prospects effectively. So I think with open t-shirts, the first thing you want to do is we want to leverage the value that we have freely available on our open t-shirts website. We want our clients or prospects to immediately understand what value they will freely have access to on our website. We know from internet research we have 8 to 10 seconds to get our value message across. In the case of open t-shirts, we want our clients to know that they will have access to free. And free is a key word here. When people see free, they react. There's so many things free on the internet, but we want to let them know what they freely have access to on our website. We're selling our website, which is going to give us the opportunity the ability to better sell our products and make more money. So our clients are going to have access to free art and design ideas, to upload art functionality, and a custom design studio. 
the same level of functionality they're going to find on the multi-million dollar nationals websites they're going to find on our open t-shirts websites so we're making a value proposition immediately and that's the first thing we want to do I really believe that I also believe that since we're in the custom graphics business we want to demonstrate that we are capable of developing creative designs that convey our business message this gives the client or prospect the impression that we are also capable of developing creative designs for their projects you know if I'm in the market for custom t-shirts or signs or a wrap for my car I want to see a website where I see a company that I believe can provide for me the type of creativity that I want reflected relating to my own business message and by having professional clean well put together graphics we're able to give this impression so now we're demonstrating value and we're also demonstrating through the quality of the graphics on our website that we have the ability to deliver on the creative side relating to graphic design and custom apparel and products finally and very important you want to have a call to action or a CTA, a banner or a button, something for them to click. A phone number for them to call. A special or a sale that will get them to take action. To move towards working with your business and purchasing products. Understanding all of these things and understanding how internet marketing works, then when we approach something like header design or banner design, we understand what our objectives are. To go a little deeper in this, I want to take a look at a couple of different things here. Here we have the actual OpenTShirts.com website, and you can go ahead and take a look here, but the first thing we say is Open T-Shirts, the free, open source, custom website, design studio, and shopping cart solution. And then we have a video tour embedded into the site. Here I have a demo that I've set up for Open T-Shirts, and this is a project that I'm working on while I'm working on the new training series and things like this. And you can see on this header, the first thing, the first objective I want when the client lands on the page is a creative design. And I did this with some energy. I wanted some action or some activity going on here. And here we have like a DJ and he's wearing his custom t-shirt and here he's kind of creating his own design on the comp. Got an element from the actual design studio here in the background. And then we have customized in action create your masterpiece in our custom design studio for free upload your logo or design and browse your apparel or product options for free thousands of art and design ideas free now here we are making the value proposition of our website we've got all this value that we're offering for free now let's take a look at what might be a typical screen printing and embroidery website now when I hit this website, I see some equipment and information about the business, but the value proposition isn't there. And we can see a contrast between the two. All I see is some equipment. So I know that this shop can print, but I don't really see what can they print. How creative are they? What value are they offering me? And we want to be aware of this when we're doing our web design. You know, I've heard it so often in my years working in the industry. We paid money for a website, we made a website, it never worked. If you don't understand how websites work and how value propositions work and how clients are thinking and responding when they hit your website, you can expect that you're not going to get very good results from your website. So many people shrink back and they think, well, the web doesn't work for us, but yet for thousands of other businesses, the web works very effectively. And I can tell you that it's not that difficult. You just need to understand a few basic principles relating to how websites work and how the internet works and how marketing works. And in reality, your website is nothing more than a marketing channel. You should have a marketing strategy with marketing channels, you know, passing out flyers and catalogs with your web address on it. And then if they come across this catalog two months later and you're thinking, well, now I'm in the market for a t-shirt design, they go to your website, they encounter a value proposition that they don't find on the other websites or if they're looking at the national websites and they're looking at the local websites and they see a local website with the same level of functionality and quality as they see that they can get from the national websites research has proven they're more likely to work with the local business 
And we also know that the nationals are now looking at the local markets as being their best opportunity for growth. So we as small screen printing shops want to be aware of these things and how to work with these things and set up our websites correctly so that we're prepared to deal with the way in which business is going to be changing on the internet in the next few years. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be working with a theme which is actually the theme that I customized here for this new demo I'm making for the training that I'm doing for open t-shirts from Theme Forest, and that is Universum. And here's the actual theme. Now this is a highly customized theme with a lot of custom functionality, but we've customized it out for open t-shirts, and we could do that because we're working with open source. We can take these themes and incorporate our open source into them, and then we can work with the functionality that's in these templates, and you'll find hundreds and hundreds of these premium templates that you can work with for your open source solutions to create outstanding interactive websites. And with open t-shirts it's very interactive because you have the website, you have the design studio, the ability for customers to create and order custom designs directly through your website. A level of interactivity and functionality you don't find on your typical or average screen printing website. And before we get into our actual graphic design tutorial I just want to recap the marketing and what's going on with this open t-shirts website that I'm putting together here. First of all, we're trying to make an impression that we're creative. We're also trying to make an impression that the user can be creative because we have the free custom design studio and we wanted to create this design with some energy. Now we understand a couple of things relating to the internet and how our users are going to interact with our website and our home page as it refers to that actually being a landing page, our home page. We can have other landing pages, but our home page is a critical landing page where users will land first before they go into our website. And we know two things. We know we have 8 to 10 seconds, and we also know that users typically don't read. They scan when they're looking at information on web pages. So we set things up kind of like with a bullet point. Customize an action. Create your masterpiece. And over here we can see a young man creating a custom design on his t-shirt, almost kind of like magically. And that's for free, and the word free is capitalized. Upload your designer logo. Browse your options for free. Thousands of art and design ideas for free. And then we have a call to action. Design now or call us. Go ahead and scroll down here. And then we have three additional banners beneath the header, reinforcing the message that we set forth in the, the header that is also scannable. Custom Design Studio. Art and Design Ideas. Free. A special, the 299 er Custom T-shirt starting at 299 with the same cool two-color graphic we see on the DJ shirt. So everything here has been set up to get attention within 8 to 10 seconds, understanding that users are scanning and then presenting our value based on what we have to offer on our website and then reinforcing that down here with the banners beneath the header, giving them immediate access to the value through the website. Here we are selling our website in order to sell our products. And we can see we make this even easier as we get on the page. You can see some featured products here, and getting to a design studio from one of these featured products is as simple as clicking on an icon. Now we're able to do this with the open source because we're able to integrate into the themes and templates and customization that's available only through working with open source solutions. So now that we've laid our foundation and our understanding for the marketing aspect or objective behind our design work, we'll go ahead and get started with our graphic design tutorial. So to get started with our actual graphic design tutorial, I'll go ahead and bring up CorelDRAW. And of course, you could design these graphics in Photoshop or Illustrator. I've got a couple of different things set up here on my website. The first thing we want to do when we're designing a banner is we really want to kind of come up with a concept. And you know, my concept really was I wanted something with a lot of energy. I want to be able to bring those bullet points out, and I want to be really creative. I wanted the client, when they hit the page, to understand that they've hit a creative business. Now understanding that, I can go out and start to put together some design assets. I've got a t-shirt comp here from my design base, which you can find that product on advancedt-shirts.com. I've got some screen captures that I made. I actually took the design ideas from the design studio, 
from the open t-shirts website I was setting up. Then I actually had a design on a t-shirt comp that I brought in also as a screen capture. And then I found myself this young man that's kind of like a DJ or hip-hop dancer. And I actually found him on a website called dreamstime.com. I did a search for hip-hop dancer jump. And you can see some images here. Now, you can find people doing almost anything wearing t-shirts and you can buy these images and use them royalty free for just a few dollars and use them to create very professional graphics and I'll show you how to take the images apart so you can make them look very realistic to really create that professional clean marketing image that we were talking about as far as creating an impression for the client and there's a number of different sites like Dream Dreams Time you've got Dreams Time and then there's you know Shutterstock and then there's iStock Photo etc and you can just Google and search through these and you can find these images and buy them very affordably. And I've got him set up here in Corel Draw also. Now, one of the other things you'll want to do is you want to take a screen capture of your actual template. Now, you want to do that with your browser set to 100%. And you want to do that with a screen capture utility or on your key keyboard, you can just hit imprint screen and then copy and paste that into Corel Draw. That way you can design in the actual area that you have in your template and as long as you export your graphics at 72 dpi they will be two size for your website or your template. Now to start the design process here we'll take a look at what I did here. I took a graphic also that I bought on Dreamstime which was like an urban hip-hop graphic and in Corel I added the text DJ Mick Jackson and I set up that design. Now what I want to do is make that design look realistic on my hip-hop guy here or my dancer who's jumping who's going to be part of my header for my slider or my website. Let's go ahead and evaluate this image. Now I bought this as a lower re resolution image at 72 dpi. If I duplicate this I can see that I've got a white background. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and get rid of that. To do that I'll just select the bitmap and in Corel I'll go to edit bitmap and that'll open up my image in Corel Photo Paint. And then I can mask him out. Take just a minute here for photo paint to load. I'll go ahead and maximize my image here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to my object docker. If that's collapsed you can just click these two arrows that I'll bring that out. Now this is set up as a background so we won't be able to delete the white as long as this is set up as a background. So I'll just click on this little background object and I'll change this to an icon. Uh, excuse me, by clicking that icon I'll change this to an object. Come over here to my masking tools and I'm just going to get the magic wand tool. Got my tolerance set at 4. I'll just go ahead and click here and you can see I've created a mask. Next thing I'm going to do is zoom in here because I can see I'm going to need some mask here also. But as I evaluate my image I can see I'm going to get a really rough mask working at 72 dpi. I think I'm going to go ahead and resample this image. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to resample. I'm going to set this to 300 dpi. Now we're going to be working at 72 dpi later anyway but doing my masking at 300 dpi is going to be a little bit smoother. I'll have to zoom out and I'll do that with my mouse wheel. And as we zoom in we can see this is quite a bit smoother now. Go ahead and left click and create that mask. Come into this area and I'll hold down my shift key. You'll see it will change to a plus here for our mask and I'll click here just to knock that area out also. Now I can see I'm going to have an area of light or white pixels here. And I want to deal with that by going to mask, mask outline, and selecting expand. And we're going to go three pixels right to there. Actually I'll go with, yeah I'll go with three and select OK. Then I'm going to go to mask again. I'm going to go to mask outline. This time I'm going to go to feather. I'm going to go to the inside, but I'll actually set this to the outside. I'm just going to soften that edge by one pixel and select OK. Now you can see there's a lot of light color in here and I don't want that when I pick that up. Now if I have a masking tool selected and I hit the delete key I'll knock out my background. I want to pay careful attention to that because if I have my pick tool and I hit delete I'll delete my object. I'll hit control Z here. I'll get a masking tool. I'll hit delete. Go ahead up here to mask and then I'll go to remove and now I've masked him out. Then I can go ahead and select save and that'll load him back into Corel Draw. Now once that's done, I've got my 
guy here set up with a transparent background. I've got this other image here. I want to take these here and this one here. And let's see what we've got here. I'll hit Control Z there, make sure I've got this one selected. I want to delete this one just so I know that I'm working on the correct image. So I'll delete this and I'll delete this. I'll take this guy here and I'll go ahead and mirror him. I'll delete these two here. And actually I'll bring him off to one side here just so I can work with him without all of those objects around. And I'll duplicate that logo up there also. Now what I want to do here is I want to split or color separate him so that I can put the DJ logo behind the shading of the t-shirt because you can see that that's not going to look good like that right there. It's not going to look realistic and we want a realistic look. To do that, the first thing I'll do is go ahead and duplicate him and I'm going to split him. The first split I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out all the black and shading. I'll do that easily by going to Effects, Adjust, and my Channel Mixer. I'll go ahead and reset here and we'll zoom out just so we've got this preview. Now here I'm going to go to the color mode of CMYK and on my cyan channel I'm going to change the cyan to zero and I'm going to do that for each of the channels. I'm going to go to magenta and I'll change the magenta channel to zero. These are your channels for the CMYK colors and I'm pulling the black. I'll go to the black here you see, I want to leave the black at 100. I'm going to go to the yellow, and I'll change that to zero. Now you can see all I've got is the grayscale or the black and white, and I'll select OK. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select the other copy I got of him. I'll go ahead and duplicate him just so I've got a backup. And here I'm going to pull out the color from the black using the same tool, Effects, Adjust, and Channel Mixer. Go ahead and click on Reset. I'll go back to the color model of CMYK. Here I'll just go to the black because I'm not going to change any of the colors. We'll zoom out so that we can see and if I change my black to zero, all I have left is my color and I'll select OK. Now I want to get rid of this blue in the t-shirt because even that's not going to blend very good with my graphic. I just want that white there. So I'll make another bitmap adjustment. I'll go to Effects, Adjust, and I'll select my Hue, Saturation, and Lightness tool. I can tell by looking at that, that that's a blue. I'll go to the blue channel, I'll come here to the lightness, I'll left click, hold down, and slide that up to 100%, and we can see in the preview I've removed all of the color in the t-shirt, and I select OK. Go ahead and select both of these images. Here I've got the black, and here I've got the color, and I'll just hit C and E. I'll take the color here, I'll right click on that, and I'll select order, and I'll go to back of page. Now you can see that I'm not seeing my color here, but I'll apply a transparency to my DJ here, and we'll make this a uniform, and I'll go with multiply, and I'll change this to zero, and now we can see that we've got the transparency going through of the shading of the black. So I'm just go ahead and grab my logo here, or my design, I'll go ahead and right click, duplicate that, and just place that right on top of the t-shirt. And I can just zoom in and position this, which would be right about here. Now I can very easily right click on this and select order and go to in front of and then click on the black here. Actually, I want to go to the back, not the front. Right click order and we'll go to back of page. Actually, we want to hit control Z there. We'll right click. We'll try this one more time. Order, go to behind and I'll click on here the black and now you can see that this graphic looks very realistic. I can take the X here and reposition this just a little bit right there, but you can see I've got a very realistic look now going on with that design, and I can resize this just a little bit here, make it a little bit bigger for the presentation on the website. So now that I've got him ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and lasso everything here. He's going to be a group of three objects, and I'll go ahead and group that, and he's ready to go. Now the next thing I want to do is set up my comp here. Now this comp I actually brought in from the Design Lab. And I'll go to Advanced Tools, it's not Design Lab, but excuse me, Design Base. Let me go here and grab that, and we'll open up our Design Base, and we'll bring in a comp that we can use in our design. And once that opens, I'll go to Comps. Now he's wearing a V-neck, and we're paying attention to detail here. I'm going to come down here to Long Sleeve, and I'm going to want a Long Sleeve V-neck. And you can see I've got that actually set up here. I want to make sure I've got nothing selected. I'll go ahead and 
click on full front comp and that'll bring that into my design and then working with this comp this is already set up I've got a monochrome bitmap on top of another monochrome bitmap so I can take this I'll hold down alt select the bitmap that's behind that you can see the fill color is this light green I'll take my RGB color palette and I'll change that to a white now you can see this is kind of dark here on the setup but I can change the darkness of that and you can see there's my comp setup now one of the things I like to do is actually convert these to RGB so I'll go to bitmap convert to bitmap I'll select RGB 150 dp I'll be fine I want a transparent background I'll select OK and I've got that comp prepped go ahead and actually take this now if I want to lighten this up some more I can come over here to the transparency tool set this to uniform and you can see that I can dial that in so that the nice soft shading on the white shirt there working with that comp from the design base go ahead and delete this here not going to need that anymore next thing I want to do is bring this design and set this up here to go on the actual t-shirt comp now here again I'll just right click and I'll go order and I'll select behind I'll click here and that'll put that behind on my design and then I can resize that accordingly as you can see there now even here I can see I might want a little bit more transparency so that I get some more clearness of the design so I'll bring that transparency up a little bit probably to right about there now I'll go ahead and select all of this and I'll go ahead and group all of this now I've got this set up if I right click here and go order and I go to back of page I've got this set up so I've got my dancer set up so that he's actually got his hand over his design like he's kind of dancing and creating his custom design now working on this and following the path that I was on I can see I added an effect to this screen capture from the design studio and all I would do is open up the actual design studio make a screen capture with imprint screen on my keyboard or I could use a screen capture utility bring that into draw and then add some effects to that go ahead and select all these logos here I'm not going to need these anymore and I'll go ahead and delete those not going to need this here anymore either go ahead and take this which is the design ideas from the design studio I'll go to bitmaps and I'll go to 3d effects and then I'm going to go to perspective once that opens you'll see some small white square dots around the corners. I'm going to go with perspective here. I could go with shear, but I'm just going to left click, hold down these dots, and then we'll get a preview of what we're doing here. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and bring this out here this way a little bit and add some more effect to that and select OK. Now this is going to have a white box around it again, so I'm going to go to bitmap and edit bitmap again to knock out the white background so I can use this without the background. And you can see we've got the white background here again go ahead and go back to my magic wand tool here change this background to an object again I want to left click here and then I'll hold down shift again and I'll click here I'm going to go to mask I'm going to go to mask outline expand again I'm just going to go one pixel this time or maybe two let's take a look here select one make sure we got a masking tool selected I'll hit the delete key I'll go to mask remove and now I've got that design asset ready to go I'll go ahead and click on save here and that's set up and draw so I've got those three aspects of my design ready to go the next thing I want to do is actually start working on the actual design area and doing that because I brought this in as a screen capture remember need your browser viewing set to 100 percent or actual size when you do your screen capture and then you can just paste that back into draw it'll be two size and then if you design within that area and export at 72 dpi for your website images the image sizes will be correct I want to set up my design area so I can start designing so I'm just going to create a rectangle that's going to be the size of this header area here and I'll zoom in and just kind of tweak this make sure that I've got it to the correct size I'm just left clicking and holding down and we'll bring that just about to there and I'm just zooming in and out with my wheel on my mouse and my pointer tool in Corel Draw. I can see I'm going to need to bring this up just a little bit here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to another rectangle here because I'm not going to want to design anything that's going to be inside of these three banners that I have at the bottom of the page 
that I was working with when I was customizing this graphic for the template. I want to have an accurate representation of the area in which I can lay out this design for this header. Go ahead and select both of these and then I'll just come up here to properties bar and I'll click front minus back and there's my actual area for my header or my banner. And now I can start to design. Now I've got my text here and text is really easy to set up in, in CorelDRAW and you can find a lot of tutorials on how to make buttons in text on YouTube so I'm not going to get into the text in this session I just want to get into the image work just so I could help you with that because there's not a lot of understanding relating to that. I'm going to go ahead and take this here and I'm just going to bring this up here so that I've got it to work with and then I'm going to fill this with a color. I'll get the open t-shirts logo here and I'll bring this up here next to this and I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool to grab a color that's going to follow my logo. Go ahead and click there. Now that's a little bit dark. I'll go ahead and double click here in the RGB I'm going to bring that and make that a little bit darker and select OK. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying to myself, you know, I'd like to adjust this color a little bit. And I might actually just come over here to the teal here and go with something like that. Now I got my logo selected and that's why I didn't get a color change. So I'll hit Control Z, make sure I've got this selected. Double click here and now make my color change here. And I want to go into a little bit more of a blue and select OK. I can change that color more if I want to later. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start power clipping these into my object because I'll be working with them as power clips. So I'll right click and I'll hold down. Remember that's a right click, hold down. I'll bring them over top of the banner area there, release and select power clip inside. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to set up some dimensions here. So I'm going to bring this template up here on top and I can see where my menu is and I'm just going to bring a couple of guides down here so that I can see what area I want to be designing in when I'm inside of my actual power clip and I'll zoom these guides in and make sure they're in the correct place you can see we're going from like right about here just so that everything's aligned correctly and the same thing over here right about there and I can see that here. And I'll go ahead and take this and I'm actually going to go ahead and center this up. Just hit the C key to move that over a little bit and center it. I can see that I'm really going to be working directly right about in the area there where I have the actual rectangle that I trimmed out. Now I understand I'm going to want an area for my text and I would lay my text out over here off to the right and then just kind of place that right there and as I said, I'm not going to get into how to lay out the text. That's pretty easy to do, and you can find a lot of free tutorials on YouTube for that. And we also have a free training series for beginners for CorelDRAW X6 on advancedtshirts.com. But now what I can do is I can select my power clip and then come over here and click on Edit Power Clip Contents. I can still see where the text are, and I can start to change these images. I'll go ahead and bring my dancer over here, and I want to bring this T-shirt over here. I want to have some balance over here and what's going on. Go ahead and move this over some more and bring this in. I might want to make this just a bit smaller. Not my dancer but my actual t-shirt. And bring that size down and line that up so it's kind of in balance with the space of the text here. And it's also got some room at the top. Go ahead and zoom out and zoom back in over here. I'll bring this over here out of the way. Bring my dancer in over here and I want to resize him so he fits within the entire banner area here where he's designing. I can see I'm going to need to make this shirt even smaller and I can make him just a little bit bigger so that his hands going there. We've got some more space over here now that we made the shirt smaller. make him just a little bit smaller there because we want him to fit in there and we'll bring this over here I'll make sure I got the t-shirt selected. I'll move that over just a bit and just kind of line things up here so that they're all in line. We'll bring this up this way here and we'll bring him up in size there so it looks like he's interacting with the design. Now we'll bring this over here and this I want to right click and select order and I'll go to back of layer 
I'm going to go ahead and click the X here and change this to a skew and straighten this out here a little bit. And then I can also rotate it or skew it up this way here just a bit and then bring this down. Now you see I got that selected so I want to hold Alt, click on the X and bring this down this way here. And then I want to click this again and skew this up this way so it looks like it's part of the design studio there in the background. Now if I go ahead and click off here and go stop editing contents, I can see my layout starting to come together. Now looking at this, I can tell I really do want to make my DJ a little bit bigger. So I'll go back here to edit contents and I'm just going to pull him down in size till his foot's right about there and bring his hand back over this way and make this shirt actually even a little bit smaller. And I'm just tweaking until I get everything in the position that I want it in as we can see right here. And I don't want to get into touching that text too much. Kind of tricky but we've got this all set up here. Go ahead and exit here again and see what we're dealing with. Now if I want to I can go ahead and lasso this text and I'll just go ahead and move that over with the arrow key to make some more room for my t-shirt here. Go back into edit. I want to make this t-shirt a little bit bigger again and then we'll go ahead and position this over here this way and then we can reposition him back over here and we've got this all set up. I'll go ahead and finish here. Now looking at this the next thing I want to do is I want to add some effects to this. You know it's the effects that make the difference in the designs and what I can do is I can create a very simple rectangle that will go right through here and I'll fill that with a black and then I'm going to go to my advanced tools and my fashion factory and I'm going to apply a texture effect to that just to put some effect in the header or background. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this update for now. Go to my textures. I'll go to system textures. Let me just browse through all these different effects that I can work with. And here I see this one, Psycho Halftone Mambo. I'll go ahead and double click on that. Then I'll click on Apply as Transparency. Go ahead and close the Fashion Factory. Now, I can edit these effects with the Transparency tool in Corel Draw. So I'll go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to make this effect a little bit bigger just so it's not so small and there's not so much of it something like that right there and you can see how I have complete control over this now what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll fill this with a white and then I'll go to bitmaps convert to bitmaps because I'm going to add another transparency select OK I'll go back to my transparency tool left click hold down control to constrain that to a straight and there you can see the effect and actually I can just go ahead and slide this up and you can see that effect in the background now this I'm also going to go ahead and power clip in so I'll just select it with a right click hold down release power clip inside now it's going to be on top of everything so I'm going to go back inside and edit I can't see it because it's white but I know I can right click on that I can select order and go to back of layer and then I can reposition that effect and then I can go ahead down here and click off and I can see my effect in the header so you can see the design we've got going here we've got a lot of action going on here in this design very similar to what we created over here the last step that I'm going to want is I'm going to want to add some brush effects to this and I'll use some of my custom brushes for that I'm going to take the outline off of that here I'm going to go down here to my artistic media tool I'm going to go to a brush I'm going to browse to my brush pack 2 and I can go to grunge strokes but I think I'll go with splats and I'll go down here to heavy splats and I'll select OK I'll change artistic to custom and now my splat brushes will appear here Now I want to make sure I don't have anything selected before I start using brushes I'll come down here and I'll select some splats maybe something like this here take a look at a couple of different brushes here just to get a feel for them how much splat they have going on in them and something like this looks like it'll work pretty good I'll go ahead and delete that and then I'm just gonna go ahead and left click down here at the bottom of the banner and just kind of arch out up into the t-shirt with these splat effects I'll go ahead and get my pick tool and I'll double click on this and I'm going to start making adjustments to this. 
I'll double click and I'll remove that node and I can make this kind of arch this way and bring it over here and just kind of interact this splats effect with my DJ here and I can actually go ahead and select this down here and move this up this way here and change this and pull this up this way here just kind of arch that a little bit I can also go back, back to my brush tool and change the size of this splat effect just like that as you can see there and I might want to create another one coming up in this way and have that come up maybe something like that so there I've got some nice splat effects built into it and I could do some more tweaking here but for the sake of the tutorial we'll go ahead and wrap here with the splats and I'm going to go ahead and click on this and what I want to do is break these two artistic media groups apart so if I right click here I'll go break artistic media group apart I can see this line here go ahead and delete that I'll go over here and I'll right click here break artistic media group apart and there's a whole two two tutorial series on advancedtshirts.com also on working with the brushes. I selected the wrong image here. I'll zoom in here and make sure I get that line and delete that. And then I'm going to take these splats I'll select this one and hold down shift and select this one also so I've got two objects selected. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup these. I want to ungroup all and see how many objects I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with 520 objects. So at this point in time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill these with a kind of a light blue color or maybe even a teal color that's going to be kind of light blue teal to match or go with my logo. And I'll make a color selection here, something like this right here. Now I'm going to add transparency to this and I want to deal with all these vector objects, so I'm going to just just go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap, RGB, 150 DPI, transparent background, anti-aliasing, select OK, let that process, and then I'll go and apply a transparency to this effect. And I'll bring that transparency down just a bit so it's a little bit stronger, as you can see right there. Now I probably would do some more tweaking here with the brushes, but as I said, for the sake of the tutorial, I'll go ahead and wrap here. Now here I've set up this banner, and it's pretty well ready to go and it'll be a nice effect. Now if I want to I can tweak the color some more. I can go ahead and look at my template. I've got a screen capture of that. See what I've got for color here. I might want some brighter blue in here. I'll go ahead and select this and I'll just double click here and I'll bring this up into a little bit of a brighter blue and select OK and see how that looks. And here we can see our banner with our effect. Now to create these banners down here at the bottom all I would do is very simply create some rectangles and then power clip the content that I had screen captured before from here along with the shirt that I have but for the sake of the tutorial I won't get into all of that here now now at this point all I would need to do for this banner is go ahead and remove this area that I've got knocked out because I want this complete get my shaping tool and I'll double click here I'll double click here and my banner is ready to go all I need to do is go ahead and select everything and then I could hit control E or file export send that out as a PNG go ahead hit export here we want to make sure we've got transform selected and that we're going to go with DPI very often the default in Corel is 300 DPI and we don't want to go out at 300 DPI we have everything to size in Corel draw we want to go out at 72 DPI and then we could ex export our header image and then upload that to our template or our website. So go ahead and wrap here. Kind of lengthy. We covered a lot of things. We worked with some marketing, understanding and concepts, and then we designed based on the understanding that we wanted to set up our call to action with the free and the call to action, everything built into our really cool banner with the custom design effects, etc. But as I said, we'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next video session.